KDO is just one out of many, many organizations many other groups that, that, that you've been with dealing us, with. You know? Let's move on here. Let's move on. What I gathered from your strategy, and is this going to be Keith Miller's legacy? Legacy. This is it. I told it's everywhere. It's going to be your legacy. That you're going to hammer that thing of police, community policing. Community policing. As I, when I visit churches, I always say mm. to the pastors and the congregation, what you do as evangelism is what we do as communi community policing. So we ask them, when you go across to witness to members on the street and distribute tracts, say a word for us. Because I tend to see our jobs as being very similar. They go to, to, to ministry, and we go across on the blocks, so to speak, to encourage persons not to get involved in acts of violence, in criminality. For example, I'll tell you, members of the DARE program who go into these schools on weekdays, mm -hmm. they go back to these communities, you know, quote unquote, we call them the hot areas, Sharps, um, Otley Hall, Edinburgh, and they do a walk through. And they will meet the young men or women on the street, especially those who are just, you know, hanging out, quote unquote, and speak with them. And coming out of that discussion, you'll find that they will, you know, um, develop or transfer what is happening in the classroom onto yes. the street. They may end up developing or discussing conflict resolution, drug abuse. So you're seeing like. fruit for your labor in terms of that strategy. Many fruits. Otley Hall and these hot spots, trouble spots as you call them, you can see things declining in terms of crime and, and, what and we, serious offenses. What we are seeing too, not only a reduction in, in criminality, yes. but we are seeing people are now coming together, especially in Otley Hall and Edinburgh. You know, um, the Otley Hall, the men from Otley Hall now, they're back over in, 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 in Otley Hall and vice versa. They are intermingling now. You know, it was so fearful that what really pulled me from upstairs into the community, things had, has, had gotten so hot, so bad, that I was fearful because every minute men from MCU, um, SSU, RRE was, were, were deployed across there yes. with firearms. So I want to pull as many firearms as possible away from going out and deal with incidents outside. Our approach, we have established such you know good relationship on the ground that one CID wants someone they'll say commissioner you know I need XYZ in Sharps or I need XYZ in Otley Hall or Edinburgh I take up the phone and call a mother and that mother will bring that child to CID so, so our men do not have to go running with firearms anymore so I'm really happy that we have taken that away from our rule, leave the firearms for extreme cases. So you're seeing your approach actually being your strategy. But being it's 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 what is in demand wall over, okay. wall over. And this approach on the ground is not only just Keith Miller's approach. The commissioners in the region are mandated by the, the ministers of national security to pay you know attention, mm -hmm. play some emphasis on young people and youth crime. We have a mandate. We have to report back to what is known as Kongsley. Kongsley happens to be the, 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 the committee of uh, ministers of national security whenever we meet. So it's not just Keith Miller doing this in St. Vincent. And I remember Motorola mm. awarded Belize and Trinidad for their community policing strategy. Right. I'm just hoping that as a result of my reporting back to Kongsley, and when we have the ACCP, that, that's the Association of Commissioners meeting, Motorola will pick up what we're doing in St. Vincent and award us. Well, that would be excellent. <laughs> Commissioner, we're, we're coming to the end of this segment. My viewers would be dying to hear the answer to this next question I'm going to ask you. And it um, has nothing to do with what, what just <coughs> preceded this. An officer in your police force made an allegation about the Prime Minister was a, accused the Prime Minister of attempting to rape her. There was a lot drawn out in the courts, etc. Now my understanding <coughs> is that officer is now back in the police force. And the way the case played out, it was a false allegation. 
Shouldn't she have been charged for making a false allegation? Well, I'll tell you. I'm really glad you made mention of that. Mm. You know, but you did not ask me the question. I was really hoping you'd ask. What is the question you want me to ask you? Person said that the mm. commissioner of police, he acted unprofessionally. Mm -hmm. He did not do what ought to be done. That's what person said. But right. interestingly, that matter went before three judges. Yes. And none of them said that the commissioner heard. And nobody picked that up. Nobody said that the commissioner, none of the judges, sorry, said that the commissioner heard procedurally or otherwise. Now the question is whether that officer should have been charged. I think the Prime well, Minister... It's, it's now a false allegation, yeah. well, according to the courts. Well, I think the Prime Minister, I think he went publicly and said he, if I remember well, he forgave that officer. And, you know, based on his investigation and, you know, his perception, you know, that, that he was politicized and so on and things like that. Yes. And on the basis, once he forgave her, I mean, why charge? So the law does not mandate you to charge. It, it isn't mandatory that you have to charge this no, person. If, no. If the, if the victim <laughs> given of this the accusation fact, given said, the no, fact, forgive them. Given the fact. Yes. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, recruiting myself, so to speak, from responsibility. The, the DPP handled the file. And if the DPP, at the end of the day, given what played out, had seen reasons for charging, charges would have been imposed. Mm -hmm. You understand the point I'm making? I'm not I'm sure if you're yes. speaking in respect of disciplinary charges. Well, there's that too. But I was just wondering if somebody accuses me of a criminal offense mm -hmm. and it's a false allegation, is it the onus of the law to turn around and prosecute that person? Mm -hmm. Or is it me to say, hey... I'm not going any further with Well, this but matter. in this case, if even though the law proceeds to charge and you decide I'm not giving evidence in court, yes. that's the end of the matter. That's the end of the matter. Mm. Okay. In terms of disciplinary um, actions, on, because she was an officer of the police force. Correct. Was there an opportunity, not an opportunity, but was there a reason to take disciplinary action? Uh, well, look at and it. And did you, in fact, take look any disciplinary action? No, the Prime Minister, as you were saying, mm. was the person accused. And out of the criminal matter, he said, you know, in any event, even if we had proceeded disciplinarily, the Prime Minister, again, uh, was required to come and give evidence. If he did not come, if he doesn't come, if he forgive, yes. why proceed? So the indications are, but the mere fact that he had given her forgiveness then it was unlikely that he would come to give evidence, to give evidence against her. In, 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 so in, case in matter. closed. Case closed. But you know, yes. I... Yes, you go ahead. No, I was just going on to another point. Yes, okay. Proceed. So, let me proceed. Mm. We're at the end of the section. Commissioner Miller, I take it that you're very passionate about... My especially job? Your job, and especially <laughs> this community policing strategy that you, you, you really got worked up on the program about. How much longer would you like to serve as commissioner? As long as God permits. I always believe um, the prime minister and the police service commission was used by God so that I will be commissioner at this time. Now happens, this, this is the commissioner, this is Keith Miller's era as commissioner yes. of police. I take my cue from God. I believe in destiny. What is to be, will be. After Commissioner of Police, do you see yourself picking up the law degree that yes. you have, getting called to the bar and becoming an active lawyer? Correct. Well, I have a number of things. In fact, this year I should have really been doing my master's. And incidentally, I have my eyes on doing my master's in community policing. This is why I'm so passionate about community okay. policing. Yes, I have to finish up my bar and get into practice. I honestly, I also believe in, in ambassadorial roles. <laughs> you know, I've seen Commissioner Ferguson in, in, in Bermuda, in, ba okay. in Bahamas, sorry. Yes. After he retired as commissioner, I think he's now um, doing amb ambassadorial role in, in 
in England. Yes. Um, there's also a very interesting thing with the UN that I, I, I really admire. I, um, I would not mind doing that with the UN. That so you, you've, got, you've got a few ideas out there about how you're going to redefine yourself. Correct. After policing. Blue, after policing. Correct. This is why I'll tell you something. When I was coming up as a policeman, I got my first promotion after 17 years. I was thrown about and I was, I was never disgruntled because deep in my mind, I believe, you see this rough, tough life? It was preparing me for something rougher. What I'm going through now in terms of people accusing me of politics, given as you see the love for my job and you know, I make a lot, a lot of sacrifice for my job, a lot of sacrifice. Um, I believe what is happening now, Tony, mm -hmm. is preparing me for greater things. This is why I'm not discouraged. This is why I'm seeing it as part and parcel of the job, um, of uh, part and parcel of the job as commissioner, being a public figure. You need so have you to meet it. Commissioner Miller is going to go on to a hair roll. Once God permits. With that, we're at the end of the program. Thank you. And I thank you for coming on the program. I salute you for your frankness, and I hope to see you back here sometime. You're welcome, Tony. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Commissioner guys. Miller. <laughs> You've been looking at On Rendon. My guest was Commissioner of Police, Keith Miller. Our next guest on On Rendon will be the CEO of what was the National Commercial Bank. Do look at IKTV for more On Rendon programs. Jomo Thomas, in the meantime, is up next with Plain Talk.